The January 6 hearings have concluded and we now have access to a bunch of transcripts and information that we didn't have. And that is actually informing decisions on criminal prosecutions of not Donald Trump. That's just a suggestion, but of people who are actually being prosecuted, which are Donald Trump's cannon fodder, if you will, his followers, the MAGA base, those who stormed the Capitol that day, particularly in one case of um, his name is Alexander Shepard. There we go, good name, Shepard and boy was he a sheep. Now, the judge in Alexander Shepard's case ruled that Actually, his defense that he was just following the president and because it's the president, it must be legal. Nah, that doesn't hold water. In fact, uh, let's go to this. Judge John Bates, a GW, uh, GWB, that's George W. Bush appointee, used the committee's findings to swat down a January 6th defendant's contention that Trump's rally rhetoric led him to think he was permitted to go into the Capitol. Trump's fight like hell language did the opposite, Bates ruled. Bates ruled the defendant Alexander Shepard could be prohibited from making the quote public authority defense because there's simply no evidence Trump told his followers that entering the restricted grounds of the Capitol on January 6th was legal. Trump's incendiary rhetoric, especially telling his supporters to fight like hell, may suggest Trump was asking them to break the law. His words could signal to protesters that entering the Capitol and stopping the certification would be unlawful. So right, you can't say, well, officer, my dad told me to break into this house and he's my authority. Or like a police officer told me to do this, I don't, God told me to do this. None of that's holding up and including Donald Trump. And specifically the words fight like hell, Dan, it was clear then, we now have even more evidence that was clear. How many times are we gonna make this clear that he knew it was illegal and he was absolutely for it? There's no way, you're not gonna, Oh, do we all have guest passes to go onto the Capitol grounds today? Hello, when, hey, yeah. it was not a oh, tour. I definitely had the little fast pass you get at certain uh, places where you go to amusement parks, you can just cut the line to go to January 6th. <laughs> yeah. That's selfish for sure, no, no, parody, parody, uh, no. I. <laughs> I think you're getting to a point here where it's like, okay, you get one clown after another who is trying to make whatever defense they can possible for why they were there on January 6th, why they felt like Trump was a power that compelled them and why this was an extra constitutional situation that got them into some extra constitutional criminal situations. Right. Uh, but yeah, what we're ultimately doing is beating around the bush here because the thing that's preventing, the thing that would prevent this from happening again is actually holding Donald Trump accountable. The thing that would prevent this from happening again is like actually showing, hey, the constitutional originalists, there's some stuff in the Constitution that talks about what happens with people who take on insurrections on the Capitol or take on insurrections towards our country in general. And there are certain, they're put in a special box, let's say, all right, mm -hmm. uh, where they can't do certain things. They can't run for office anymore. They can't possibly be put in a situation where they have that kind of power and they threaten this democracy again. So many peaceful transfers of power. This is the one in all of American history that this hasn't been. And the only reason the so called party of constitutional originalists isn't aligning two and two here is because it's their guy. And for so yep. long, they were rooting for this guy. And it doesn't seem like Donald Trump has that much juice right now. Uh, for he who has said a wrong election prediction in 2023, in 2022 before the election cast the first stone. But they want Trump's base and they don't wanna alienate them. And so they're playing this careful dance. But at the same time, this is really serious. Yeah, and I think it is it is important because it shows that um, on a legal level that Donald Trump and his supporters knew what they were being asked to do, although not explicitly go and you know take a brick and throw it through the window or take your like flag pole and beat a cop. Like that wasn't explicit, but it was implicit that you're gonna break the law and this is what you'll have to do. And I'm glad that we're not parsing words here or like meanings and that the intention of criminality has been proven and that judges are now taking that and saying, yeah, 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 we're going to at least, we can't go after the big fish yet, I guess. But at least these, again, the cannon fodder is, get, is seeing some time.
For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.